And what I'm going to do is have a, a little div with a class of author block. And we're going to say, you're submitting this reply as, and then we could have a span that contains the, and then we could just say at model.author name here. And then we'll have our form to actually submit a reply. So this will be a form with ASP action. Um, and we'll just make our action call maybe add reply. And of course it has to be a post method. And the ID will be add post form for this form. And here we'll do an ASP validation summary of all. Oops, all. And the class will be text danger. And we can go ahead and close this div. And then we can have our form group for the post content here. So div class form group. And we'll put our label out, ASP for reply content. And we'll just say reply here. And then we'll have a text area for the reply content. And here we can specify the number of rows. So let's say we give like 20 rows, uh, class form control, and we can have a placeholder here as well. And we could say like your reply. And then make sure you go ahead and write a closing tag for the text area. Okay, so this is the reply content section section and I'll just have a span ASP validation for reply content in case we want to validate some particular type of data here text danger slash span and then we can close off the div for the form group and now we just need to make sure that we go ahead and supply a button so the button type will be submit and the ID will be Submit reply button with a class of button and button submit post. So we'll have a similar style to our create a post form as well. And here we can say submit reply. Okay, now we could supply a few hidden fields as well that we might need. So ASP for author ID that we can post up to our form, which would be a type hidden. And we can post up the post ID and the forum ID here. Okay, and that should basically complete our form. So it's a simple page with three rows and like the top row just kind of gives us the page heading. And then the second row shows us the, the post with the post title and its content for the original post. And then the third row contains our form for us to actually submit a reply. So let's go ahead and write our method to actually add the post um, that our form will actually call. So it'll be this add reply method in our reply controller. So go ahead and head back there. And so just under our create method, we'll create another public async task. And we'll also make this an I action result type so that we can redirect. Um, we'll call this add reply. And we're going to post back up the entire post reply model. And we'll go ahead and make this um, an HTTP post method as well. Okay, so now we could actually just get the user ID once again from the context. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll say if our user ID is equal to user manager get user ID. And we'll pass it the the current user from the context. And we can go ahead and get our application user from that, just as we did above here. So we'll say user manager find by ID async user ID. And then we'll have this reply object that we get back from the form. 
And the way that I like to structure this is we're going to have a separate private build reply method here that we can pass the post reply model to and our user to. So if I control period on build reply, it's actually going to create a private method for us. And let's have it return the post reply entity model type. So what we can do is we can actually build the post entity model using our post service. So we can just say get by ID and we've got model.post ID. And then all we need to do is re return a new post reply object. So we can go ahead and return new post reply with the post on it, of course, being the post that we just use our post service to get. The content is going to be our model dot reply content. Recall our model is this post reply model. It's coming up from the page. And created, we can just set to datetime dot now. And then the user we can set to our user. So just a lightweight wrapper around a, a new post reply object that we're returning here. And so now let's go ahead and use our post service to actually add that reply back to our database. So we'll do add reply, um, which is a method that we'll have to create. We could write a separate post reply service, but what I'm gonna do is actually just handle all of the add reply methods inside our post service. But if we were to create a reply service, we could do that as well. In our case, it would just simply contain a, a single method at this point to add a reply to a data to the uh, to the replies table in the database. So in our case, we're actually just going to write an add reply method on our post service. But yeah, as I said, if you want to make it super clean, then you may want to have a completely separate service to handle your reply entity models as well. Okay, and now we can just return redirect to action index post and we'll pass it an object with the ID of the model.post ID. All right, so now let's head up into our post service and create this add reply method. So first we'll head to the interface and we'll just go ahead and create a task here called add reply. And of course that's gonna take a post reply object and we'll call it reply. And yeah, as I, as I mentioned, you know, you may want to create a completely separate interface called iPostReply and then add this uh, add reply method to it. Um, once again, perhaps asking ourselves uh, the entire time whether or not it's even necessary to make the post object any different from the post reply object. If they are almost the same type of thing and indeed that might simplify um, the structure of our application a little bit as well. But I don't mind the way that it's set up and apart from this perhaps belonging in its own service, I think it's still reasonably manageable being placed here in our iPost interface. So let's go over to our post service. 